Welcome to the FX Warehouse Presents Life Casting. Today we will be using the Front Face Life Casting Kit, which is a bald cap, spirit gum, spirit gum remover, one pound of alginate, two four inch rolls of plaster bandage, latex gloves, five pounds of ultra cow, and a chip brush. We will also be using uh, some items I brought myself, which are buckets, paper towels, a pair of scissors, masking tape, and a trash bag, and Vaseline, and I also brought a dry erase marker and some cotton balls. For good measure, I also have hair gel, a spritzer bottle, some popsicle sticks, and mixing sticks. For the for the final, at the end, when I'm using the Ultra Cal, I have a new, a bigger bucket. I also have some burlap, which you'll see why. And that's not necessary, but it's something I, I needed for a project. And I have a larger bucket for Ultra Cal because I was doing multiple casts that day in front of a live audience. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start the bald cap. Now, you can see I put a trash bag around him and used masking tape to put the trash bag down around his neck. Do not use duct tape. For the cast, for the bald cap, Excuse me. You can see that I'm cutting out the ears, and I'm just doing that just because I wanted his uh, the edge of his ears for this particular cast. You can actually just go over the ears, and we're going to be doing just a front face life casting, which in this case I had eventually used for a zombie. So you'll find that spear gum is a contact cement. So sometimes you have to put a little bit on a skin and you're gonna see I'm tapping it there. And that's, so when I lay down the rubber, it is already sticky and it's gonna hold down. That's probably what I'm explaining to the group there. <laughs> Make sure you get the back, even though you're not gonna be going there, especially for people with long hair, just it protects them from any accidents with the alginate. Now alginate does not actually stick to hair, but the hair gets wrapped up in it. So you want to always protect it. You can even use little pieces of uh, cellophane to cover any extra bits of hair. Now I'm using a dry erase marker to mark the hairline and that will transfer to my cast if I need it to. Also, be careful how far you bring the cast back over the actor's head. You do not want to go past the highest spot or the cast will not come off their face very easily. Now, I Vaseline his eyebrows and his eyelashes, and if they have facial hair or any hair that's sticking out the side of the bald cap, put a really good amount of Vaseline. Do not uh, just let that keep dry. Now, with alginate, cold water makes it set slower, warm wet water faster. You will be mixing equal parts alginate to equal parts cool water by pouring the water into the powder and mixing. Do not do it the other way. So you're going to see I put the bucket onto his lap when I'm ready. And I put the water into the powder. And I'm using a bucket with round bottom. And it makes it easier to avoid getting little clumps of unmixed powder. So I'm starting at the top. And that allows him to feel the temperature of the alginate. And I'm going in smooth, long motions. I'm not going over the exact same spot. And with the eye, notice how I stand on the other side and drag upward. And that's so in the pocket above the eye, I don't get an air bubble. Now, I'm doing his nose last. Do not use straws. And you're going to see I'm just doing his mouth. And I'm always letting him know that I'm there, what I'm about to do. And I've also given him hand signals. Thumbs up for yes. Thumbs down for no. So I can ask him how he's doing. And if he can't breathe, he's instructed to wave his hand in front of his nose like he smells something bad. And then I know to check the nostrils. And if he needs to remove it, he just puts his hands up and taps his head. And I know that immediately, no matter what, I start wiping it off. You never force a model to go through this if they've become uncomfortable. It's incredibly rare, though. But always make sure they can breathe well before, in their, through their nose before you start. And that they're not severely claustrophobic. And now I'm just looking for thin spots. And it's good to have a partner to watch the nose the entire time for you. And I just put the excess from the bottom. You'll see I'm just throwing it up top and letting it run down. I'm using a Q-tip around his nose. And right when it's about to dry, you'll see I draw a line under his uh, neck area. And that's just so there's not an extra bit hanging down later. And I also am going to take a little bit of water on my hands right now. And I'm smoothing it out. And that is allowing me 
to uh, have a smooth alginate to put the bandages on top of. So once I've smoothed it out, which will allow, like I said, the you don't want the plaster bandages to have pockets between that and the alginate. So if it's smooth, it'll be a really nice fit. So you know the alginate is dry when it is dry in the bucket. It'll actually dry quicker on his face and my hands due to body heat, but when we know it, it's dry in the bucket, we know it's absolutely ready for the next stage and there's never a question. But until then, you just can never tell. So now I'm gonna take the plaster bandages and I've actually done this beforehand. That's why you see them without the bald cap. Um, I'm rolling them out and then I'm folding them over and that's about eight to 12 inches long. So now when I apply them, I'm actually putting on two layers at once. This is a real time saver later. Now you can use scissors because you can see there's some dust going on. Um, and two rolls is enough. I've got a little bit of extra there for uh, some other projects, but um, the two rolls in the kit are plenty. Um, just again, make sure you do not cover his nose. So I'm using warm water so the bandages set quicker. Again, warm water, clean water, and the bandages will set up within about five minutes. Now, you're gonna see that I dip them in, I kinda of roll them in a little bit, and then I'm gonna wring out the excess water. You're, it's gonna take a few tries till you learn how much you need to wring out. And then I'm going to fold them over like, like that, and then I'm going to frame the face. And this is the little bit before the highest part of his head. And that way I know this won't wrap around the, the crown of his head and get stuck on or just make it more difficult. So I like to frame the head. I start with the top and then I hang the bandages down the sides and do the neck. And the reason this I do this is so that way when I fill it in, um, they all have a place to stick and grab and they don't fall off. Now I overlap them a good amount and I really massage in the plaster. So you're gonna see tiny, tiny little squares uh, inside the fabric, a texture. When you rub it, the plaster in, those squares get filled in with plaster and that's how you know you've got a good contact. And you also wanna follow the contours of the alginate underneath. Again, any kind of air pocket will present a problem later that you just don't want and it could distort your cast. And if your cast is distorted, then your mask will be distorted. So I'm gonna take my time and I'm gonna really frame that out and you're gonna see I'm gonna go above where I wiped the alginate under his neck earlier while it was still wet, because then I can peel that off later. Some people will add salt to their water to help the bandages get harder quicker. I don't know if that really helps, um, but I do know people who do that. So once you get this in, you're gonna, we're gonna to start to fill in everything except the nostrils. And again, I kinda of do the nostril area last. Um, and again, make sure you always overlap and don't go in a very you know orderly pattern. Crisscross them. That way they really adhere to each other really, really well. And you know, a lot of times your model is under there and um, you know, I'm constantly asking them, are they okay? And I'm constantly letting them know I'm there. I never leave them alone in the room because that would make them uncomfortable. Now if if I think it's going to be 15 minutes till they're out of this, I will tell them it's five minutes. And this is a nice little technique to keep people nice and relaxed because they won't really have a good idea of time. But if every few minutes you're like, hey, you're almost out, this is almost done, even somebody who's slightly nervous or even a lot nervous will relax because they think, hey, this is coming out. Now, I will tell you, because the plaster bandages do heat up slightly, a lot of people tend to fall asleep. So one of the issues you have is their head's kind of going backward or falling forward. So sometimes you'll see right there, I've got my hand on the back of his head, and that's so when I push the bandages on, I'm not making his neck hurt. Um, a full head cast is quite heavy, so some, you just have to always be aware. Now I always tell people to wear old clothes, old shoes, old pants, because there is a lot of dripping, and make sure they take out any earrings, nose rings, other piercings. Um, because you don't want those to get caught up in the alginate. So right now, I'm going to wait till the bandages kind of get a little warm, and then they're going to cool down, and they're going to be hard. When you rub your finger, they won't be chalky or leave like a little film. So that's how I know it's ready. So now I'm telling him to make faces, I'm telling him to make happy faces, sad faces, puff out his cheeks, 
um, wiggle his nose and his mouth around. And that's going to actually free the suction from the alginate because there's nothing really holding it there. So I'm going to have him lean forward while I hold the cast. Now I'm going to be very careful not to have my hand over his nostrils. This is a problem that some people do when they're new. So that's still drying. So you can see I'm actually peeling out the alginate. And you can see it just came out in one big sheet. So now I'm letting him know actually to lean forward. He's been making faces. And I just, you saw that I just put my hand over his nose to show people don't cover it. And I'm pulling gently on the bald cap backward not catching his hair and it's actually popping the edge because you don't want to rip the edge of the thing and you're gonna see it is just gonna pop off any second I'm getting my finger back behind his ear he's telling me where it's sticking and as I massage the cap it's just popping off and I like to do it from the bottom and I tell them to keep their eyes closed because they've been in darkness for you know a good 10 minutes 15 minutes and there they go and he's rubbing his eyes a little bit, and I'm going to have somebody remove his bald cap with a Q-tip or cotton ball and the remover that came with it. In the meantime, I'm going to use a small batch of alginate to close the nostril holes. You can see there that they've been closed up. That actually is the negative space, but in a photograph it looks kind of positive and stretched. So to make that small batch, I take a little Dixie cup and I use warm to hot water and a little bit of equal part powder, maybe a little bit extra powder, and I make it into a thick paste and I'm going to push it from underneath the bandages. And you'll notice the bucket, the, the face, I never turn it upside down because then it could come dislodged from the bandages. So right there, I'm mixing a little bit of water. I'm eyeballing it. I just want it a little bit extra, you know, thick. And I'm going to press it from the outside through around the bandages up into the nostril looking down. And you want to be incredibly careful. Now, Wet alginate will not stick to dry alginate, so it would be able. I would be able to peel it out if I had to, but I'm just trying to close those nostril holes, but not get it inside the cast. It's just so when I pour the plaster, it won't leak out. And then after that, I'm going to take a couple pieces of plaster bandage and put that over the alginate from the outside of the bandage to seal in those nostrils. Now with UltraCal. It's warm water is fast setting, it's cold water, it would take longer. So I sift the powder into the water and you can see I'm just using my fingers over the cup and I'm sifting in the, uh, into the water. Now it will triple the volume. So use about a quarter of whatever the bucket size is of warm to hot water and just sift in the powder. Now with the kit, I recommend doing small batches. I'm using a larger bag because it was just more convenient. Um, the five pounds that the kit comes with is more than enough for a, like a large size head. So just, but take your time, do small batches, and you're going to sift it in. And when you'll know it's ready, when the ultra cow in the water looks like a dried riverbed. So you just keep sifting in until it gets to the point where it looks like, you know, the, the floor of an old riverbed that's dry. You don't want it too watery. Then you're gonna, I'm going to mix it with a stick, and then I'm going to slowly paint it in very carefully into the cast. Now watch the nostrils and the lips, because sometimes there's little bits of alginate. You don't want to dislodge those. Sometimes it's even better if there's anything like in between the lips to trim it off. So I'm going to paint that in, and that's going to take you know a good 45 minutes. Um, take your time. You you want to build up you know maybe a quarter inch thick. Because after that, we can build up some burlap layers to make this cast hollow. You can even put a handle in it. So you're going to see, I'm going to spend quite a bit of time doing this, which is why we're speeding this up, because this process takes, you know, a good 40, 30, 40 minutes. Um, the 30 in UltraCal 30 stands for 30 minutes, meaning if you mix it really uh, in the pr certain proportions and certain water temperatures, it will get hard in 30 minutes. Now that's more for construction purposes. For our, us, we're doing we're gonna it's gonna take a little bit longer. We want a little bit of a thinner batch. So now I'm gonna spritz that first batch with a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna paint in you know a th kind of thick batch of UltraCal. Then I'm going to dip in the burlap into the thicker UltraCal. You're gonna see I'm gonna mix that a little bit extra thick. 
Now with this batch, I sometimes mix uh, while you know add a little powder after I get the the normally proper mix to make it a little extra thick into a paste. And now um, again, it's just like the bandages. You want to really massage the plaster in. You don't want to see any burlap like little pockets of air, uh, any texture in the burlap. And I'm going to build this up about maybe say two layers. And then you can take a dowel rod if you want and make a, a handle. So this process takes quite a bit of time. And again, the ultra cal will heat up and then cool down completely. You could burn yourself without ultra cal as it cures or dries, I should say. So completely let it completely dry. Now this process you're gonna see I'm prying very carefully the plaster bandage around there. Be very careful, you can easily scrape your knuckles. You can see to, uh, on, on the other side of me, I've already opened one up uh, that some of the other people in the room had done earlier that day with me. So now, I'm opening that up. You can see we had a full class of life casts using these kits. Um, I can't tell you how great this life casting kit is and I use it every time I do a life cast I honestly just buy the kit instead of buying uh, bigger quantities uh, for convenience because uh, it's in great packs for students um, but I believe she also sells really good large quantities of the alginate and bandages at some really good prices uh, so if you're doing a multiple cast you may want to just buy a 20 bag 20 pound bag or 25 pound bag of the uh, alginate so now I'm trying to save the alginate. You don't always need to do that. I do it because if you let it shrink for about two weeks, in the bandages, if it's intact, it'll shrink up and you can actually make a shrunken head that's kind of distorted and it's a fun little project to do with your uh, leftover alginate unless you've ripped it. So you can see I've gotten it all in one piece. So here's the, the cast right out of the mold. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned it up and then I actually, uh, you'll see the line there, is because I made a copy of the upper part using another life casting kit so I could make a prosthetic zombie brow using FX Warehouse's really great gelatin kit uh, that I highly recommend. And then I applied it and colored it with the uh, alcohol-based palettes makeup, which you can see in some of the other demos. So all these materials, are, all the products are available at fxwarehouse.com. Check us out. Thank you.